Wackes. Ja, nee. Wackes. <lacht> Komm raus jetzt. Nein. Komm raus. Das ist <lacht> oh Aufstehzeit. Ja. Bestmeister Classic. Deine Helden warten. Ja. Komm. Fox at Home, es ist soweit. Heute ist der erste offizielle Tag, nicht des Turniers, aber der Medientag. Und da werden wir schon mal eine volle geballte Ladung Videos für euch abliefern. Was passiert alles die nächsten Tage? Bestmeister Classic, für die, die es noch nicht wissen, das größte Angelturnier der Welt, das prestigeträchtigste Angelturnier der Welt. Ähm, die beste Elite der Schwarzbarschangelei wird hier an den in Freitag, Samstag, Sonntag, also an drei Tagen ausfechten, wer der Champion, wer diesen Titel und auch einiges an Kohle mit nach Hause nimmt. Ich glaube, insgesamt werden eine Million Dollar Preisgeld ausgeschüttet. Der erste gewinnt 300.000. Und äh, ja, das wird wohl ein hartes Battle werden. Wir sind hier in Knoxville, Tennessee. Und das Turnier wird am Tennessee River stattfinden, in einem Flusssystem. Es hat relativ viel geregnet in den letzten Wochen. Der Wasserstand ist wohl recht hoch. Wir haben den Fluss selber noch nicht gesehen, aber schauen uns das gleich alles mal genauer an. Genau, ihr wisst jetzt, so, worum es hier grob geht. Wir legen los und es geht ab. On the road, erstmal was frühstücken und dann geht's ab. Ciao. What the fuck? Hey! Ciao. Morning, Sir. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Good. So. No more jet lag? No. Ready to rumble? Nice. So, hier sind wir, Media Day, das heißt der Tag vor dem Turnier Bassmaster Classic 2019 in Knoxville, Tennessee. Und was passiert hier eigentlich? Qualifikation über die Bassmaster Elite Series. Die besten 52 Angler sind jetzt hier vertreten. Wir haben auch einen italienischen Vertreter mit dabei, zum ersten Mal jemand aus Europa. Er hat sich qualifiziert über die Turniere in Italien, dann hier einen dritten Platz gemacht und ist jetzt auch mit dabei. Und am Media Day haben wir jetzt heute die Möglichkeit, ein paar Interviews zu führen, mit den Profis zu reden. Und da wird auch noch einiges kommen. Also checkt auf jeden Fall unsere YouTube-Videos aus, die kommen werden. Hier zum Beispiel einer der wunderschönen Trucks von Aaron Martins Duo Realis Pro. Und ihr könnt es euch mal anschauen, hier hinten stehen jetzt die ganzen Boote aufgereiht. Wir haben einfach alle Leute, die das Who is Who des Bass Fishings hier heute vertreten. Wir haben Kevin Van Dam, wir haben Aaron Martins, wir haben natürlich den zweifachen Champion Jordan Lee am Start. Wir haben Jacob Wheeler, wir haben Mike Iconelli, you name it, they are here. Und ähm, wir sind glücklich hier sein zu können, euch ein bisschen Berichterstattung in Deutsch liefern zu können. Gehen jetzt einfach mal hier exemplarisch rüber an das wunderschöne Boot von Aaron Martins. Wir haben ihn eben schon kurz gesprochen, er ist soweit bereit, die, die Conditions, also die, 
Die vorherrschenden Bedingungen sind wohl nicht so leicht im Moment. Das Wasser ist ziemlich hoch, ziemlich dreckig. Wir fischen hier in einem Flusssystem im Tennessee River. Also nicht wir, sondern die Jungs. Und ähm, ja, es wird wohl nicht ganz leicht werden, aber ich bin mir sicher, es werden ein paar dicke Fische kommen. Morgen geht's los. Freitag ist der erste Turniertag, Samstag der zweite, dritte Tag ist dann am Sonntag, der alles Entscheidende. Abends sind immer die Weigh-Ins hier in einem ganz großen Stil. Wird auf jeden Fall cool. Bleibt dran, checkt out unseren Kanal Swat Fishing. Bis dahin, ciao. So, ich bin jetzt hier mit ähm, Jacopo Galelli aus Italien und wir machen das Ganze in Englisch. Ich kenne ihn schon viele, viele Jahre, fische die Turniere in Italien gegen ihn, mit ihm, wie man immer es auch nennen mag. Und ich habe auch so ein bisschen den Weg verfolgt, den es gebraucht hat, bis er jetzt hier ist. Und dazu stelle ich ihm jetzt einfach ein paar Fragen. So, Jacopo, nice to meet you here in the United States. Normally, yeah. we need in Italy, Bolzena or Coginas uh, or yes, whatever. Yes. So, maybe tell us a little bit about how is it possible to be here now? about the qualification mm. and uh, how you prepared over the years because I know you had it in the mind to be here right now this is the day like tomorrow will be yeah. the day to be here uh, the thing is uh, I have uh, qualified twice for the Basque nation and that's how I qualified to be here I was third in the last uh, year championship and uh, I was able like the last qualifier to enter this big tournament and my dream came true and uh, sincerely this dream uh, was born when I was 16 and even uh, I was even younger honestly because when I was five uh, I started fishing and uh, instead of saying everybody I will be the um, you know the fire uh, work how do you call the pompieri yeah it's uh, the a fireman fireman yeah i would like to be the fisherman yeah really and then when i was 16 i started to fishing uh bass fishing i was starting honestly at 14 but then i started to look at tournaments when i was 16 and i told myself i will make the bass master classic one day and uh, now this uh, this uh, came to reality and uh, it's fantastic no and um, it, it has been a long process because uh, i have sacrificed everything of my life i left all my family in italy and now i'm living alone for months i understand that probably everybody think that i am blessed but probably this is more a course than a, a bless because uh, it's hard honestly it's very hard it's tough every day you are alone if you have a problem you are alone i honestly uh, feel blessed anyway because i am living my dream and i'm doing really what i like to do in my life and uh, that's very good but anyway it's tough and uh, I feel like after this tournament everything could be more easy for me. So we have to try to make it happen. So the plan is um, that you stay here in the United States to fish other tournaments, not just the Bassmaster Classic. Is it um, probably it was not easy to get here now that you're here? qualification you have to do a lot of practice you have to have the knowledge to compete with the best yes. in the world but now is it the plan that you go pro in the United States full-time yes not uh, really full-time uh, this year I will stay here for eight months and then uh, in the off season I will go back home in November and uh, I'm attending also two division of the bus master open my season start was pretty tough i had just bad tournaments and uh, the goal is to reach the elite series next year i don't know if it is doable uh, i had a very tough tournament in the central division and uh, a not positive tournament in the eastern but anyway by the eastern i'm still on the game to do that and uh, also i have some really good shot to 
qualify for the next uh, Bassmaster Classic. So let's see what happens. I will do my best as always. And uh, I don't know what to say because uh, probably most of you are t not asking themselves if they can do the same. I think that everybody really would like to sacrifice their, uh, his life to do that, can really do that. But it's, uh, you have really to gamble with everything. And uh, So there's really good sides on it, because you can do what you always wanted to do, but you have to sacrifice so many things with family, with back everything. in Italy, uh, you are basically on you your own. Really, then uh, you have not life, because uh, every day I'm fishing, there is no Sunday, there is no Saturday. Um, you always have some issues with, uh, with the boat, with the car, with the insurance, you are not American, also the mm -hmm. language is not easy, even now uh, I am pretty good in speaking, but uh, it's not easy to understand everybody, and uh, so uh, it's not easy, simply, <laughs> and, and uh, it's not no uh, something that everybody can do, because uh, uh, I'm, I was talking to a lot of people that uh, is a mission, it's not a dream, it's different. Do you understand the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think you are on a mission, you can do that, if not, impossible. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And you also have the project um, Don't Dream It, Be It? Yes, that's my hashtag and uh, that's when uh, I started to really do that, I think three years ago. 2014 I attended the Bassmaster Open with a very bad uh, season start. I had my lower unit gone on the very first uh, event of the season. So all the season was uh, was bad and you know, for that reason I only got a check in three tournaments. Anyway, uh, now I am here, I am ready, I am uh, better than every, every time. I am well trained, I am healthy, so I can do I can do it. Perfect. Jacopo, I wish you all the best for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and of course for Sunday. Yes. And um, I'm really glad and proud that you're here and that we can be together with you on the boat. Yeah. And um, I wish you all the luck and everything yes. that everything works out well Thank for you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, also ähm, wie gesagt, er, ich werde das jetzt nicht komplett übersetzen, wir werden das wahrscheinlich untertiteln, aber er hat schon mit 16 Jahren gewusst, dass er hier mal stehen möchte, heute ist es soweit und ähm, er muss dafür sehr viel einstecken, ähm, sehr viel mitmachen, sehr viel durchmachen, er muss alle Probleme hier alleine lösen, seine Familie ist weiterhin in Italien und ähm, ich bin sehr stolz, dass es jemand aus Europa geschafft hat, hier mal mit dabei zu sein. Und ich wünsche ihm wirklich von Herzen alles Gute für die Zukunft und dass seine Pläne gut und erfolgreich in Erfüllung gehen. Soweit zurück nach Deutschland. Bis dann. Ciao. It's technology. It must be German. Technology, you like it. I think it's, it's, awesome. it's Chinese, actually. It's Chinese. It's tiny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, also ich bin jetzt hier bei Aaron Martens, einem der bekanntesten Angler aus Amerika. Schon ein paar Jahre hier mit dabei und schon einige Classics mitgefischt. Um, er ist ja auch Duo Realis Pro und ist mit vielen Entwicklungsarbeiten zugange und ich werde ihm jetzt einfach mal ein paar Fragen stellen auf Englisch, die wir dann wahrscheinlich untertiteln werden, um, über das Projekt, über das Turnier und so weiter und so fort. So, Aaron. You're right, I didn't understand any of that. Yeah. <laughs> and, I feel that. <laughs> and, and this even with your grandparents coming yeah. from Germany. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I lived here, here all my life, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine, so. Um, One, yeah, of, one of the countries I definitely want to visit is Germany for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're, you're always welcome. Mm -hmm. Give me a call. Okay, yeah, I might I, take you up on that. Yeah, that would be great. So, um, we're here with Aaron Martins now and um, maybe give a little introduction about yourself to the people that don't know about you yet in Germany. It's um, maybe a few that don't know you, but you're around for many years in the yeah. elite series. You fished a few best master. Um, classics, you fished the Opens in the beginning, I think? I fished, uh, I fished well, I grew up on the West Coast, uh, in California, uh, Los Angeles County, uh, kind of the outskirts of Los Angeles, but we, I grew up fishing Castaic, you may have heard of that in Ger Germany, because it was known for a giant bass, yeah. Casitas, 
and all the Southern California, all, all the West Coast lakes I fished, and I fished all the Western circuits. I actually made a, a living out there and bought a house and had my first kid without coming, without fishing Bassmasters, mm -hmm. actually fishing just West Coast events. Uh, so it was a while before I actually started fishing the bass events. I think I was 27, 28 years old when I actually finally started fishing these events. And so I started kind of late in my career, but I had a really good career before that. Uh, won a lot of West Coast tournaments, but, um, you know, I wanted to do this for a living. I wanted to fish at the highest, you know, I felt like I wanted to fish at the, at the highest level. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm 46 now. So it's been a 20 something years. I came out here and, and started fishing and I came out here for some championships on the West Coast. And it's a long distance, you know, it's, you know, from California to like, uh, Arkansas or a lot of times I went to Texas. So, you know, that's like a 2000 mile drive. And, and I came out here and fished some of the championships and really fell in love with the East Coast and the whole United States. So. Uh, I became a, once I came out here and started fishing the BASS events, it was kind of a, my dream, you know, I could go visit different areas of the country and, and, uh, it's so much different everywhere you go, like New York to Florida, to Texas, to California, to, to Minnesota, to the, I mean, there's, it's just so much different everywhere you go, where you're going. That, to me, that's what makes this sport so exciting and why I love it so much. And how many days are you actually spending traveling from event to event? How much are you home? Uh, not home a lot. Um, there's probably eight months a year where I'm gone most of the time. Uh, drive about 35, sometimes 40,000 miles a year, uh, depending on how much you know I have to do. Fly a lot. We go uh, get on planes and do shows and and fly to see family. It seems like I fly quite a bit. It's it's a lot of traveling. It's something you have to probably love to do. Uh, otherwise, you might hate it because you're gone. Like I say, you're gone a lot. Um, but it's. I camp. I have a, actually have a camper I use. It goes in the back of the truck, like a, a slide-in camper. It's got to slide on it, full bathroom, shower, you know, big refrigerator, and it's got my own queen-size bed. And all my tackle is tucked away. Uh, I carry a lot of tackle. I don't know if you guys know how much tackle I carry. More miscellaneous tackle and more variety than any pro probably in the United States. Uh, and I keep my stuff immaculate, but I can only do that. I think camping. I mean, some of these guys do other truck, but. Uh, camping to me is uh, is the way to go. It makes it more fun, I guess. Yeah. So you're closer to the yeah, action. Yeah. You, you come home. You got. I mean, I got a house in Alabama, but but I basically when I get in my camper, it's kind of. And, and my family stays. They, my kids go. Uh, it's a nice school in Birmingham, and uh, so I'm not with my family a whole lot, which is sad. But I, I, you know, I communicate with them, and they're and they're here at this event. But it just makes coming back to the instead of going to somebody's, you know, renting a house or a hotel, and to come back to your campers. It's just much nicer. I've done it my whole life. I've always camped. Yeah, cool. I used to backpack, and I was back. You know, I kind of started off backpacking. I don't know if you guys know that, but yeah, I used sure. to do a lot of backpacking yeah, trips. Yeah, nice. Like long, long distance ones. So that's your style, in yeah, the camper, yeah. I grew up close dad, to your boat, we, close to the did, action. My, yeah, when I grew up, we were. My dad took me backpacking. He actually attempted to climb Everest twice, and uh, he didn't quite make it. But he went to Nepal, Peru, and all that, and went back on, on trips to go backpacking. And when he'd come home, he'd take me to the like, California, the Sierra Madre and all that, and Colorado, and we'd go. So I backpacked a lot when I was growing up, which was really good for me, and maybe that helped me become the angler I am today. Uh, it probably helped, I'm yeah. sure. And uh, But it's just that kind of got me into that. Yeah, camping's nice. So you, you said that you started um, <coughs> California events first. Mm -hmm. When did you decide to go full-time pro and how difficult is it to take this decision <laughs> well I was in Cali California and I was probably uh, 21 but I, I worked a lot and it's not like I didn't work I, I worked jobs I had like four different kinds of jobs I even worked on an ocean boat I was a tackle store I worked at a tackle store a gas station uh, I worked construction for a while that was probably my best paying job but uh, I was 21 years old when I actually stopped working and started really working. <laughs> it's not like it's not like you stop working when you're bass fishing. That's another thing that people ask me. Uh, one of the things you need to like, their, their moms and dad will ask me like because their son wants it's, or daughter wants to bass fish, and, I, and one of the things I tell them is you got you got you got to be kind of a workaholic. It's not like you can't just go through the sport and yeah. just like tie something on. But you got these guys work all the time. I work all the time, and and fishing is the easy part. It's not. Fishing is not the hard part. It's having everything you need and everything, haul your hook sharp. And we don't just carry like five boxes of crankbaits. I got like 80 crankbait boxes in my boat. I'm not exaggerating. So, I mean, I got bags of tackle back here. It's all full of tackle, the whole boat. So, I mean, it's all organized. So if I need some, I know right where it's at. And that's a lot of work to do that and to keep it up. 
fish in these different events that you know sometimes we're in somebody else's boat for the, some of the major league events we had to get in another boat and mm. fish and take all your tackle out of your boat all organized and it was a smaller boat so it's non-stop never-ending uh work to get to prepare for each tournament there's yeah. a lot of preparation to do yeah and many people don't get to see that and food, because they see you fishing the event and they believe it's um it looks easy. the best job in the world oh, yeah. and as a fisherman you probably think so they make fun of us but actually the hours they put into the sport are astronomical like hundreds of hours a week it's it's crazy how much sleep. very little sleep sometimes you know sometimes you got a really hard event you got to make baits or tie skirts like i have to do to, like today after this is over i gotta actually make probably six or eight baits today that's our backups and i, I gotta pull boxes out of my truck which is kind of messy right now and i gotta find that stuff and it's gonna take a little while but yeah. it's, it's never ending never, i don't feel like i ever like i'm ever completely ready yeah There's always and, something to do. And then you're also working together re re very closely with some companies, uh -huh. your sponsors, yeah. and one of them is Duo Realis yeah. that you teamed up with, I think, three years ago. Mm -hmm. It's and like my third, third season now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, how is that going? I mean, how much time do you have to develop products, give them feedback, they work on it, give you pro probably prototypes? Yeah. Maybe you can tell, tell us a little bit about it. It's uh, it's it's amazing actually. Uh, I've been to Japan for Rialas twice now. Uh, every every trip just seems to get better. Uh, I've actually been to Japan four times total. But uh, Rialas, Mr. Dachi and the whole staff are just amazing. Uh, it makes it easier. Uh, I have a friend out here I've known for years, David Swinside. I've known him since I was a kid, and uh, he we communicate back and forth. So it makes it a lot easier because a lot of times I'm so busy, but I can talk to David and kind of explain what we need to do, and he kind of communicates with Japan realis and then we go back and forth and I'll get some prototypes it's it's a little difficult for about from January till June to to play at the prototypes it seems like every time I'm on the water I'm trying to find bass for a tournament mm. and it's very you know you don't have time to play that yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, sure. but uh <clears throat> we went to Japan we uh we we like the 100 uh vibration 100 uh the, that's probably gonna be amazing bait I mean I'm not, I can't throw it here it's a little big Uh, we're throwing more like the 68, but I can't wait to the bite's right for that bait because it's amazing. I've already caught fish in a couple lakes around here on it and uh, in, in the U.S., but in Japan I caught a bunch of fish in Biwa on it. And and uh, talking to Mr. Dachi and, and the tank he has, it's amazing. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I, I was there for the great opening. I'm going to put some goggles on and go swimming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just to get that bait right. And I think Mr. Dachi, uh, he's super smart. And once I kind of it's the kind of thought what we needed to get because I wanted the bait to kind of try to get to move on the sink and then try to move at real slow speeds but he actually nailed it I mean the thing falls and it flutters kind of like a stick bait like a soft stick bait you know they kind mm -hmm. of and they fish eat them because they stink they, they they wiggle as they fall we got the the 100 uh, to do that mm -hmm. the apex 100 and it actually wobbles on the sink and then when you rip it up it, it's just it's phenomenal I, 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 I think we're going to work on some of the smaller ones maybe a different a smaller one to do the same thing but it's it's amazing how they eat that bait i'm super excited about it cool so there's a lot of influence in this bait yeah and um there's the apex or apex project lots of hours lots of tired hours lots of uh on the tank i mean we i mean it was it was where we worked for late hours and we had the guys up late you know they we'd tell them uh what we kind of wanted you know cut, shave off like two grams here or half a gram here and they they'd come back like 20 minutes later with a bait you know Yeah. Whatever they do, it glued together, and they we toss it out there, and it's exactly how we were asking for. And about oh, we can go back a little bit, or put the you know they, they're so good at yeah. that. And it's so so small details that changes yeah. the whole movement of oh, the bait. Yeah, yeah, a little small small increments. Yeah, uh, having the weight taller, or lower, or more spread out on the belly. That's yeah, huge. It's and you're also well known for being really precise yeah, and perfection, versatile. Perfectionist, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So I think it's a really good um, partnership that I you have I with. Run a clean ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're yeah. I'm, I'm excited about the future, and we're definitely working on some. Uh, like square bills, you know, bait, like kind of off-road, four-wheel drive, I call them, kind of crankbaits you can throw almost anywhere. Uh, we're working on that right now and, and possibly a spinner bait. So, you know, we got some things on the table, swim baits. and Yeah, I've seen some prototypes on the spinner bait too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about soft baits? Yeah, we're working on soft baits. Uh, I think uh, they got, I got some prototypes right now or I'm supposed to be throwing, but I've been at like three events the last month, so it's been really hard. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't been in a place to really throw a bait like that yet, so... Um, I still have to do some. To, yeah, I have to prototype that. That's where I come. I haven't tested them yet. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, cool. sorry, guys. That's fine. You'll have more of a chance in the next events, maybe. Yeah, for this next week. What's the preparation 
you take for, for a Bassmaster Classic? First, what does it mean to you to be here and how do you prepare? It's a, uh, as a professional, you were busy uh, this week, you know, doing this and, and uh, anyway, did a little bus tour earlier today. They don't, they don't give you a whole lot of time to work on your tackle. So the prep work and during our three days last week, I, every moment I had, I was kind of trying to pre-prepare and uh, during practice, you know, three days we had, you're trying to basically dial in. So you're, you know, I want 16 pound on this bait or I want 18 pound or 20 pound. Once you get that all dialed in and what color bait seems working best. And I mean, I have like eight crankbaits, 10, maybe 10 crankbaits tied on. That's crazy. And uh, So you're saying this is um, probably a crankbait event? Crankbait, spinnerbait, chatterbait, everything. It's a, it's a, we, call, we call them junk, junk fishing, but it's just because this lake offers so many so much different I mean, you can go from a uh the main river we got current uh you go back in some of these creeks some are some of these creeks are kind of deep and they have a lot of deep stumps and like lay downs that go drop drop at steep levels and you go to some of these creeks are real flat and shallow and you gotta have something totally different for that but we're all fishing everything i mean we're fishing the flat muddy stuff to the really steep straight drop-offs so uh, i've been anticipating i'll have a you know, nine or ten rods maybe 11 or 12 i might have a couple here spinning rods just for backup but uh, yeah, it's going to be almost all moving baits, most likely. Cool. And it's a lot of prep. You know, like I said, it's shallow. You won't lose a whole lot of baits here because a lot of the fights are three feet or less. So we shouldn't have a problem losing them. But, it's, I mean, some of the stuff you cast, you can't even get to it. It's just too shallow. So it, you got to have backups and backups for backups and ro backup rods, too. And how is it with the weather situation? I heard that uh, yeah. there was a lot of rain. The water's really muddy, and there's a temperature drop it's, for tomorrow. Yeah, the temperature drops got, I think, everybody a little bit concerned. It's going to drop in the morning. So we had this monster front coming through, as usual. We get, like, we've been getting, like, one to three of them a, a week. Uh, we've, we've had exceptional weather the last three days. Like right now, it's, like, 75 and beautiful out, a little windy. But tonight's going to be warm all night until about 6 o'clock in the morning. So right, right to the event. Right to the event, and then the temperature's going to fall. So that's, if you guys are bass fishermen or even pike carp fishermen or, or specks or, or pike or whatever, and when you have that drop in temperature in the morning or, like, during the day, that's a lot of times you've missed it. Like, mm. it's before that event. They really bite. It's usually when it starts to fall like that, it's fish get tougher to catch, and they're already kind of tough to catch, and they're already kind of in hard places to catch them. So very challenging event, um, but I'm up to it. I mean, I've been fishing a long time. I know how to catch them in diverse conditions, so I'm excited about that. Maybe it'll help me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. In the end, you're all fishing in the same water, and yep. I think your realis cranks will help you out to catch some big ones. They will. I'll catch them all. And they're, um, biting, they're biting them good this all week. So. Yeah, unless you want to say something in German. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you very much for your time. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, with that being yeah. said, back to Germany. Thanks thanks for watching and Bye, follow our channel Swat Fishing. That was fun. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was fun.